Artillery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Sir, sir yes, sir. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair. Sir, yes, sir. If you ladies leave my island, if you survive recruit training, you will be a weapon. You will be a minister of death praying for war. But until that day, you are pukes. You are the lowest form of life on earth. You are not even human fucking beings. You are nothing but unorganized, grabastic pieces of amphibian shit. Because I am hard, you will not like me. The military, which I will be comparing to the mill or the workhouse. The mill, a place where a raw product is turned into a more refined one, such as grain, which is crushed to make flour. A facility that grinds, presses or rolls, but can also be a system or institute that influences people or things. Hence, the run of the mill, or the education mill. Now it's easy to compare the process an individual undertakes when entering the military. They are essentially a raw product, which is ground and pressed into a more refined one, taking an individual and programming them, making them into something that can be controlled and easily manipulated, breaking the individual down to recreate a new alter, a new personality. The very fucking godmother said it. I'm fucking standing. I will PT you all until you fucking die. I'll PT you until your assholes are sucking buttermilk. Was it you, you scroungy little fuck, huh? Sir, no, sir. You little piece of shit, you look like a fucking worm. I bet it was you. Sir, no, sir. Sir, I said it, sir. For me, this is easily compared to the old mills and workhouses of the past. That not only themselves made a product, such as flour from grain, but also changed the individual in dramatic ways. Like the army when entering a workhouse, all food and bedding are provided. They care for your basic needs and they set you to work. In the army there is much training. The training is the breaking down of the personality to make it bend. Just like in the workhouse or the mill, the work, like the training, helps break the individual. For the word training has train in it, which highlights to take a person from one place to another, edging back to MK mind control. They take an individual from their base and change it into something they desire, create a new. So with this said, the mills and workhouses of the past simply change face. Just like the education and schooling system, we enter raw and uncorrupted, or at least close to that, to be trained, worked, and programmed for the next step, that generally being a workplace, in some cases the military. With education or the education, could we change the to add, which when reversed makes deducation, with cation meaning a positively charged ion, one that would be attracted to a cathode. As shown before in the Atom Adam video, it not only highlights the dead element with deducation of what they are killing within the child, it also highlights the casein to charge or even discharge something with the dead at the beginning, making it either lose connection or connect to something. And although people or children aren't dying in schools, it still trains them, manipulates them to control them. And when saying children are not dying in school, physically they are not, but mentally and emotionally they may be. Often school creates a lot of mental stress and many people struggle at school, not only academically, but socially, emotionally and mentally. Maybe the true start of mental health problems. And more so in the army, people do die, just like the workouts. And if they make it out, they are cursed with PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, due to the experience itself. Again, just like the peoples of the past and the workhouses. So again, the military is one of the closest modern representations of the mill or the workhouse we have, alongside the education system and the workplace. For the workplace does the same thing, just in a less dramatic way. You enter a workplace, you have to undergo training. The training they require you to meet, 
They pay a small wage for you to do their work, often making a person feel like a slave. 9 to 5, Monday to Friday for most people, with the weekend off. Obviously, after all of that, they are weakened. The hamster of the workplace goes on and on until retirement, which they constantly lift, meaning we are all working or essentially in the workhouse or mill all of our lives, only leaving when we can't do the job physically anymore due to age. And then it's generally too late to do anything that person maybe wanted to do previously. Their body won't allow it. Not only this, alongside is the mental stress caused from so many years working, being trained and conditioned. We have to apply or essentially die, most with one foot in and one foot out, attempting to live almost two lives, a work one and a home one, again splitting the individual in two. Now the purpose of this video isn't necessarily to say don't join the military or be scared of the education system or workplace. The purpose is more to reinforce and show further what these institutes and facilities are really doing. Their requirement is you obey, listen and do what you were told. Are you shook up? Are you nervous? Sir, I am, sir! Do I make you nervous? Sir! Sir, what? Are you about to call me an asshole? Sir, no, sir! How tall are you, private? Sir, five foot nine, sir! Five foot nine? I didn't know they stacked shit that high. You trying to squeeze an inch in on me somewhere, huh? Sir, no, sir! Bullshit, it looks to me like the best part of you ran down to crack your mama's ass and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. I think you've been cheated. So people can make their own informed decision. Something that I would advise is send this video to anyone considering joining the military. At least then they will be partly aware, even if they decide to join, and maybe see for themselves. We are but numbers, a number on a screen, Numbers to help with a higher agenda, generally for profit and gain, but in many cases much more, edging on to world control and domination. In this system, if we fail to take part, we die, literally. If you don't take part in the system at all, i.e. make no form of income at any point in life, you will not survive. And maybe this is accepted and seen as common sense, but myself can see a different scenario possible. One that doesn't corrupt and break an individual down for the purpose of control, manipulation and gain. Ultimately, awareness is key, bringing control back to the individual, to you, and not letting outside forces, external forces control or influence you. Only then will we take full control of ourselves and we can really make a change. At 18 years old, and still in high school, I made the decision to join the military. I wanted a sense of adventure. I wanted an education. I wanted to feel like I was a part of something bigger. And in some ways, I was looking for a second family and somewhere to belong. Off I went to basic training, where they spent the first few weeks tearing us down and grinding us down into feeling like we were absolutely nothing. I remember the first few weeks in basic, our squad was forced to learn a Bible verse. It was, I believe it was in Psalms. It was, for I am no longer a man, I am a worm, despised and scorned by everyone. Those who see me jeer at me. They stick out their tongues and they shake their heads. Now, after a few days of saying this, we were given the privilege of being allowed to say woman instead of man, as we were a squad of females. We were, you know, told that this was a special privilege because now we weren't like everyone else. We were saying woman instead of man. So they spent the first few weeks tearing us down and really getting the individual out of you they really reiterated there is no I in team. And they spent the last few weeks building us up into like a perfect unit where everyone 
you know, did things in unison and everybody looked the same and they marched the same and they, they did their drill the same and, you know, fired your weapons the same and, you know, you were very good at order and the training was so intense that it's something that you don't forget 30 years later. So after basic training, you're all sent out to your prospective units for whatever trade you chose. And then you start to build the bond in, in your unit. This is um, quite often called unit cohesion. And this is where everyone in the unit has to be on the same page. If you're not on the same page, then, then there's conflict and chaos in the unit. And that is just not desired at all. If you were to perhaps break the rules, there's consequences. There's the, all the char like charges that can be laid. Uh, there's conduct to the prejudice and good order. There's all different punishments that can be laid out just for not following the rules. And this could be, you know, even in a, in a wartime situation where you were told, you know, not to fire, but then you did and you saved your unit, but because you were told not to fire and went against orders, you would be extremely disciplined. So you can't think for yourself when you're in the military. You can only think for the unit and then you have to listen. So even if, if your officer told you to go off and do something and you knew it wasn't right, you still have to do that because you have to follow orders. Orders are everything in the military. And if you break orders, then you've broke unit cohesion and that is just a punishable offense. So in the military, if you don't conform, if you don't do what they say, they get rid of you. You're considered a problem. So if you speak out about how you've been treated, they don't fix the problem about how you're being treated. They just get rid of you. So the military grinds down some people and to feeling like they are absolutely nothing. And when they leave the military, even though they've served their country honorably and distinguishably to the best of their abilities, there's no honor left for them from the country. So you put yourself through the mill. You grind yourself down so that you can serve your country. Just to be told things like, you're asking for too much when you're looking for benefits. Serving in the military leaves you with a sense of pride, but at the same time, is that pride worth your individuality so that you can't ever be yourself? This was a deeper conversation and I thank you for your time Now I send you love and light Never let the dramas of this world dim your light Never let the evils of this world tell your might They may be winning battles but I never win this war So for the time we walk in darkness hold your head up tall Love, light and peace to my strength to you all Love, light and peace to the warrior light